Chapter 6 kind of throws a lot of material at us and it makes it seem harder than it is. We're going to talk about the periodic inventory system versus the perpetual inventory system. We'll talk about assumptions for FIFO, LIFO, or average cost, which assumptions we could use whether we're using the periodic system or the perpetual inventory system, and we'll talk about the lower of cost or market value. So let's start by talking about the perpetual inventory system versus the periodic inventory system. Perpetual means we keep our inventory system perpetually up to date. So all the time throughout the uh, accounting cycle, we update our inventories. So when we buy something we're going to resell, we debit the account inventory. Then we either credit cash or accounts payable, depending on when we're going to pay for it. Then whenever we sell something, in the perpetual inventory system, we also update our inventory. So that means there's two journal entries every time we sell something. One records a sale, either we debit cash or account receivable and credit sales. And then we also update our inventory system. So we debit costs of goods sold, expense or debits, expense or debits, expense or debits. So it makes sense that costs of goods sold would be a debit balance. And then we credit inventory, reducing our inventory account for whatever we sold. And when we do that, it's at our cost. The periodic inventory system says, let's not mess with that. Let's just wait until the end of the period to figure out how much we sold. And so when we buy something in the periodic inventory system, we don't debit an account called inventory. We debit an account called purchases. And then whenever we sell something in the periodic inventory system, we have only one journal entry for every sale. That journal entry just records the sale. In other words, we debit cash or accounts receivable, whether we're getting paid today or tomorrow, and we record the sale. Then when we get to the end of the period, we finally make an effort to figure out what our cost of goods sold was. And we use the uh, formula, beginning inventory plus, plus purchases minus any inventory equals our cost of goods sold. So for example, if I have a little tiny store that sells motorcycles, and at the beginning of the period, I had two motorcycles in my beginning inventory. Then during the month, I buy three more motorcycles. In other words, I'd be debiting purchases and crediting accounts payable or cash. Now I have five motorcycles available for sale. I have the two that were in beginning inventory plus the three purchases. So I have two plus three is five motorcycles available for sale. If I get to the end of the month and I look out on my lot and I only have one left, that means I must have sold four. In other words, beginning inventory of two plus purchases of three minus any inventory of one means goods that I sold must have been four. Except of course we'll substitute dollar values into that equation in the real world. Okay, so that's perpetual uh, versus periodic inventory system. The other thing that we'll uh, talk about is LIFO, FIFO, and average cost. So if I've got a bunch of things that look exactly the same, I don't have to keep track of which one I sold out of my inventory. GAP and the IRS will let me make an assumption to make life easy. So I use this really lame example about my sporting goods store. So I'm going to open up my sporting goods store and I decide I should sell ping pong paddles. So I buy one from the manufacturer and the manufacturer says, sure I'll sell you one, they cost $10. So and let's assume we're in the perpetual inventory system. This applies whichever system we're using. So I debit inventory and credit cash for 10. Then we're getting closer to the uh, opening day of my new store and I decide I should buy a second ping pong paddle because I may want to have customers who want to buy more than one paddle. And the manufacturer says, absolutely, but they've gone up in cost now. I now charge $12 for my manufactured ping pong paddles. So I debit inventory for 12 bucks and I credit cash for 12 bucks. Then it's the night before, and so I call up, night before opening, I call up the manufacturer, he says, yeah, 
I want to buy another one and he says yeah you can buy another one but the price has gone up again I now charge fourteen dollars so now I have three ping pong paddles that look exactly the same in inventory one cost me ten one cost me twelve and one cost me fourteen dollars so we're in an era of rising prices and we have to decide when somebody walks in and buys that first ping pong paddle which one they sold so civic ID means I put a tag on each one of these things so I know exactly which ones they bought. But I don't have to do that. I can also use FIFO, which means first in, first out. So in that example, that means I would assume that my first paddle that I sold was the first one that I bought. So if somebody walks in and buys a ping pong paddle for 20 bucks, ping pong paddle for 20 bucks, I would debit cash for 20, credit sales for 20 and then I would move that ping pong paddle that first one out of inventory and into cost of goods sold so if I were to do a little mini income statement at that point my sales are 20 my cost of goods sold is assumed to be 10 my gross profit would then be 10 another method to go is last in first out in other words, the last paddle I bought is the first one I sold. In this case, that would be that paddle there. So somebody comes in, they still buy the paddle for $20. They pay me $20 cash. I credit sales for $20. But this time, now, I take this $14 paddle and move it out of inventory. So in the LIFO system, I still have the sale for $20, but my cost of goods sold is $14. My gross profit is only 6 Another way to go is to use the average cost method. So at this point, my total inventory is $36 divided by three is 12. So I take the average cost out. So still sell it for 20 bucks, but we only move $20, $12, excuse me, out of inventory into cost of goods sold. So my mini income statement looks like the $20 sale minus the $12 average cost gives me an $8 gross profit. So my cash balance is exactly the same in, e in any event, whichever one of these three uh, assumptions I use, FIFO, LIFO, or average cost, but the income that I state on my financial statements and on my tax return is different. In an era of rising prices, LIFO means less taxes because I make less money. My cash flow looks exactly the same but on paper, it looks like I make less money. And uh, finally, let's talk briefly about lower of cost or market value. If I have these things on my inventory and I have them on there for 36 bucks and it turns out there's a flood of ping pong paddles on the market and the most I could sell them for is $6 each, Gap says I can't leave them on my books for 36 bucks. I've got to mark my inventory down to 18 so I can't wait until I sell them to recognize that loss. That would be misleading to my investors and my employees and everyone who uses my financial statements. As soon as I realize that my inventory can't be sold for what it costs me, I have to mark it down to its market value. And that's what lower of cost or market value means. And that's pretty much all there is to chapter six.